What's up, guys? Poli Malanaji for Poli TV. Javante Tank Davis against King Ryan Garcia is over with a resounding win for Javante Davis. Certainly uh, a fight that I think where a lot of people picked Davis, I didn't. At the, coming down to the end, I was going back and forth, but coming down to the end, I, I decided on Ryan. Um, I decided on Ryan based on Javante Davis' uh, past struggles with range. But ultimately it was a fight where Javante had way too many levels than Ryan Garcia so let, let's 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 break it down a little bit I think uh early on Ryan tried to command the ring which I think was the right thing to do he tried to command the ring try to you know impose himself physically on on Javante and he had Javante kind of walking around against the ropes or, or just on, on on the perimeter of the ring as Ryan commanded the ring but there wasn't a lot going on Javante's always you know reflex his reflex is as quick as a cat and you can't just attack him, even if you're if you have him in retreat mode. Uh, but you know, I thought Ryan was uh, uh, using his jab pretty well in the early going of the fight. I in the second round, I, I think he got uh, Javante's attention. I wouldn't say he hurt him, but I think he got Javante's attention. I remember there was a moment where Javante was stuck uh, was uh, against the ropes, and he literally just speared at Ryan just to because he ran out of uh, options to get off the ropes, and he speared at Ryan. And I remember thinking, hmm, I was like, I wonder, uh, you know, how, how Javante is gonna. Uh, figure out a way out of this situation well Javante figured it out in the same way he always figures it out in that he gets you to bite on things he gets you to overcommit on things and then he makes you pay for it and once you you end up paying for it the fight is either over as it was in the Rolando Romero fight or the momentum of the fight changes and that's what happened tonight uh, last night you know uh, I think uh, uh, when Ryan was getting started just starting to get confident just starting to impose himself physically on Javante Davis the uh, the sh shot that Javante Davis landed to, to drop Ryan Garcia was a big momentum changer that, that allowed Javante to keep the momentum from that moment on. And let's see how he set that shot up too. You know, it's a, he, it was a, it was, it, it was on the entrance and this is the same way Ryan Garcia gets himself stopped with a body shot later in the fight in the same way where he's close to Javante Davis and Javante has a, a good smother uh, from the southpaw stance, a good smother where he kind of bends in underneath your guard and you've got to create that space. Ryan is trying to create that space by extending his arms and trying to like come around, come around the side. So with the first knockdown, he's trying to throw a hooking right hand, but it's on a bent over uh, Javante Davis. So you know, Davis is going to be able to dip underneath pretty quickly because he's already in that position physically where he can just dip really fast because he's already down down kind of in a crouch and he's smothering you. So you've got to create that space yourself. But what he inadvertently does here, because again, a guy with long arms shouldn't be on the inside like, like that for, for long periods of time. What he inadvertently does it, though, he ends up giving Javanta the space because he, he gives that space and he throws that rounding hook, which again, looks awkward for a long armed guy. And he throws that rounding hook and Javanta gets underneath it and then he, he he comes over the top with a with a big left hand, drops some drops Ryan Garcia. I don't even know if that broke Ryan Garcia's nose because it was shortly after that that Ryan was bleeding from the nose consistently. It was it was that or you know it doesn't necessarily mean your nose is broken when you're when you're uh, bleeding. But of course you know there were other left hands in the fight that Javante was sharply landing and eventually you know it did start to draw the blood. I don't know if it started from there from that knockdown. That was a big shot right up right smack on the nose of, of Ryan Garcia. Uh, from that moment on, you can see uh, Ryan a little bit more with a little bit more trepidation to take control of the ring, and also Javanta starts to, you know, take command a little bit at a time with all of his deceptive tricks. You know, he's got these little, he's got these little uh, uh, change in levels he gives you real quick. He, he uh, what he changes in height real quick, changes in levels real quick. Uh, he gives you these little feints. He's shooting. He's he's drawing you out. Uh, I noticed Javanta was extending that right hand a lot at a certain point, and, and, and Ryan didn't wasn't even parrying it, you know what I mean? And it was allowing Javante to have just enough protection to when Ryan would would try to enter past that extended right hand, Javante was was there with a sharp left hand. Um, Javante has a quick trigger with that left hand, and that's one thing. Uh, that that's the that's one of the beauties of being young, and one of the beauties of being sharp as well. You know, it's uh it's when you when you damn seatbelt. I gotta put learn to put on these seatbelts. But when you shot when you shoot a shot. Uh, um, that w when you're able to uh, control that range like that, and, and and he's got a quick trigger finger, so, so to speak. Obviously, he got a quick trigger, and um, he's able to just shoot those shots. You don't see them coming. He doesn't put full weight on them, but they get your attention, and they and they and they give you, they force you to respect him. Now, Ryan, 
as the fight goes on, is running out of options. He's running, trying to figure out ways to get on the inside. But Javante is the one that is starting to show the different levels. Again, the things I just explained to you before. And they are creating other openings for him. Ryan is shooting the occasional uh, body shot. It's like a weird body shot that he throws from that from that height. It's, it's actually the shot he knocked out Luke Campbell with. But he, he was landing it on Javante, but it wasn't really doing a lot. Uh, also, Javante really held true to his word in, in that Ryan is uh, mainly a left hook guy. And Javante was completely, he had the radar on point with that left hook. Ryan did fire it off a few times, came close a few times, maybe even partially landed it here and there, but but it never really landed in the way it was supposed to. You know what I'm saying? It never really landed in the way where it was going to, you know, affect Javanta uh, the way it's affected a lot of people if it landed. And that's because Javanta was able to evade it, at least evade it in, the, in, in its most powerful parts, you know? And not only that, when Javanta has you paying to close the gap, when Javanta has you paying to to when you miss, you automatically now are putting less, en less enthusiasm into your own power, into your own shot. As a matter of fact, Ryan, for me, start, stopped jabbing as often. He started the fight, uh, you know, with a pretty consistent jab, but as the fight went on, he used it here and there sporadically, but he didn't use it the way he could have, especially with that height and reach and the snappy uh, the snappy trigger that he has with his jab. He, he, I thought he could have used it more, but I think he was overthinking about Javante's counter left hands, uh, which Javante will start to do if you throw the same jab over and over again. Ryan has no feints at all. Um, he, give, he gives you these, these little different... Uh, Arm, arm bobs with his arms and stuff like that trying to change it. But pretty much he gives you one look one uh, and no feints. So no matter how fast your jab is, if you're given one look and no feints, Javante will start to counter it. A guy like Javante Davis will start to counter that no matter what because timing beats speed. And what ends up happening is Ryan has no adjustment, which the adjustment is to, you know, drop some feints or, or, or you know, ch change the uh, change the speed on the jab so that Javante is not, is not, uh, is not able to uh, counter it so much and take it away from you. But since he had no adjustments, he let Javante take away his own jab, and he was not as consistent as it was before. Javante started throwing some sharp left hands to the stomach, straight left hands to the stomach, or, or followed by right hooks. Ryan, all he all he could really do was go straight back, and um, you know he would he would catch those body shots on the end as well. When it comes to the knockout, the body shot on the knockout. Um, same kind of situation, really, as the, as the initial knockdown, or similar anyway, in that Ryan is getting close in, and Javante has that clever smother from the southpaw stance. Again, he gets in that crouch position, he smothers you, you have no space, especially if you're long and you have long arms. So now, what do you do? Ryan wants to now create his own space again, because he wants to throw that hooking right hand again. And he wants to throw that hooking right hand again, and he's creating his own space, which, which there was actually moments in the hooking right hand from the outside where he landed them a couple of times. But from this distance right here, especially when you've got Javante in that crouch position, you've got to be careful because Javante is already in the crouch position so he can get underneath quickly. He's short, so it makes it easier for him to get underneath it. Didn't make the adjustment, made the same mistake again. He throws that right hand over the top of Javante. Javante gets underneath it again, and he pulls a quick trigger with, uh, uh, with the body shot this time. Now, people were saying, I was watching this place out out of the bar, and people were saying, oh, man, uh, that didn't really land that much. Two things, okay? Some, sometimes those raking body shots hurt you more, okay? I, 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 I felt those myself sometimes. Number two, Ryan Garcia's throwing a punch. You gotta remember, when you're throwing a punch, you're already exhaling. That body shot, that shot to the liver is even worse when you're throwing a punch. Ryan Garcia was throwing his own punch. And and, and so Javon doesn't have to land it that hard. He's gotta land it just, just enough. Plus, you've already beaten Ryan a little bit psychologically. You've beaten Ryan physically. So he's gonna feel that body shot a little bit more. Now, when it comes to the eight, the eight count, Ryan tried to uh, evade looking like he was hurt and then he just took a knee. I think Ryan Garcia quit, okay? I think Ryan Garcia quit. Not that he wasn't hurt from the body shot. I think he was hurt from the body shot, but I think Ryan Garcia knew what was waiting for him when he got up. He had ran, he was out of adjustments. He was out of ideas. And Javanta was getting closer and closer, getting more confident and just starting to be more consistent and be more more and more deceptive to the point where Ryan really had no answers. So I think Ryan, he's hurt in the, from the body shot, but he can get up from the body shot. I think he chose not to get up because it's going to only get worse from there, which we all know also Javante is a second half of the fight, a half, second half 12 round fighter to begin with. So, so he's usually getting better as the fight wears on regardless. As a matter of fact, my pick had been Ryan Garcia by earlier KO, but I said the, if the further the, if the fight starts to get into the later rounds, it actually becomes more advantageous to Javante Davis. Now, it was not that advantageous in the early rounds even to Ryan, but by the middle rounds, Javante was already dominating. So if, 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 if Ryan starts to, if Ryan gets up there, he's going to show heart, but he's going to have to show a lot more heart 
if he uh, uh, if he's going to continue into the second half of the fight because Javon he's already out of options. You can tell if you're watching that fight the last two rounds. Yeah, Ryan had a decent sixth round. I think Steve Fahad gave it to him. You could give it to him, but again, he's he's struggling to create something. He's struggling to create something. He can't land the big shot, and you can see Javante with those little deceptive feints, those little deceptive looks, change of looks. He's getting closer. He's getting closer, and even if he's not always landing, it's it's pressing Ryan. It's it's making him panic, and so ultimately. Uh, Javante Davis uh, gets the stoppage win. Um, one thing I got to say about Javante Davis, I don't think he gets enough credit for his boxing. People talk about his power a lot, you know, and, but, and, 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 you know, people look at somebody like a Shakur Stevenson with a lot of boxing ability, Devin Haney with a lot of boxing ability. Think of the boxer somewhat, even Flomachenko with a lot of boxing ability. And think of those guys as the boxing guys. But Javante is always the guy that people think about with a lot of power. But now this is the second time I've really taken full notice of Javante's boxing ability. The first time it was uh, in the Pitbull Cruz fight where Pitbull was, wasn't going to go anywhere. You know, he was a guy who was durable, sturdy, and he was really, really making your life miserable when you're in there. And Javante was not going to be able to punch with him. I mean, he could punch with him, but, you know, first off, Javante, I think, bruised his hand in that fight because, you know, those bald heads, they, they, they tend to hurt your hands more. And also, um, he's just a sturdy guy. So, you, in order to, if you're going to try to knock him out, you're going to get in the way of his power. And Pitbull hits pretty hard himself. So, I think, you know, Javante went back on his boxing, uh, uh, went back to his boxing and really showed a lot of uh, graceful boxing in that fight. You know, a lot, a lot of reflex boxing, a lot of change in angle boxing and Pitbull's slow feet ended up not being able to keep up. Fought a good fight against Javante, but he was just not, just not able to keep up. In this fight, you saw that boxing again. Javante ends up getting the stoppage. He gets two knockdowns in the process, so his power is still obvious. But it's his boxing ability that impressed me. You know, it's, it was his ability to take away everything Ryan wants to do and also to start to add to the things he was going to do. Because as he started to take away the things Ryan wanted to do, it started to give Javante more options for the things he wanted to do. And that ultimately uh, ends up leading to, 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 to the end, which, of course, the, both knockdowns for me was the same mistake by Ryan Garcia. What do you do? And people say, I'm going to say, okay, what do you do in that situation if you're Ryan when you're that close? You know what you do? You you take the guy's head behind his neck and you just drag him down. You push him down. You make the ref break you and you go back on the outside. When you're that tall, when you're that tall and you're and you're sitting there fighting on the inside like that, it's it's against the guy who's very very got, got short arms and is very very explosive on the inside like that. You don't want to be there for that long and you don't want to you don't want to make it that sloppy and and that that uh, un uncomfortable. And and Javante makes it uncomfortable when he smothers you like that. So now you're already you're finding yourself trying to find space for the shot because you're close. But you got the long arms, bro. You shouldn't be there to begin with. So by, by creating that space, it's Ryan who's kind of trying to step give a half step back to try to throw that hooking right hand. But in, in reality, all he's doing is he's creating space for Javante because Ryan's stepping back, so he's not going to have as much power on his, on his hooking right hand and the, on, the, on that inside moment. But Javante's holding him, himself and setting his feet. So he's the one, he's not allowing himself to, be go, to go back. He's making you go back to create the space. So right there, he's setting his feet. He's, he's going to have more power on his shot, and he's able to land both times. And those were the, both the, the knockdown and the knockout. You, what you do there, you don't even fight there. You drag his head to the ground. You, you, he's already smothering you. He's already getting underneath you. Just lean on him. Lean on him the way Lennox Lewis used to lean on guys. You know, just lean on him and 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 make it uncomfortable for him from the inside. And then go back on the outside and go back to your jab. The problem was Ryan was already confused. Ryan was already confused. His jab was already being taken away. After the first knockdown, the momentum really, really switched. And I thought Ryan lost a lot of confidence, and and Javante gained a lot of confidence. And from there, it just kept going, kept getting more and more advent, becoming more and more advantageous to Javante Davis. Where did Javante Davis go from here? You know, I'm looking at this right now as I'm analyzing everything in the lightweight division. I could see uh, Shakur Stevenson and Javante Davis becoming the the Crawford versus uh, um, the Crawford versus Spence of our era, the Mayweather versus Pacquiao of, of, of this era, not our era because I've been through different eras, but of this era, I could now I, I kind of could see it after last night. You know, um, uh, I, I think uh, um, Lomachenko and Haney. Lomachenko will end up, you know, being overtaken by Stevenson if he beats, beats Haney. If Haney wins the fight, I think Haney just goes up in weight anyway to 140 pounds. So I don't think they're going to remain around the same weight. But I think Shakur and Javante Davis. And, uh, it, and what I'm saying with Spence and Crawford and, and Mayweather Pacquiao is not just for the two best guys, but also the headache of the multiple networks owning both of them. So it'll become a very, very difficult fight to make. But as these two guys look better and better, I think there'll be more and more of a demand and it'll have to be made. But again, it'll be that fight that because of network politics, it'll be very, very difficult to make. Um, I could see that happening. I hope that 
it's uh, uh it's not the case uh, I could see them both become uh, as far as not the case as far as the fight being difficult to make but I could see these two guys kind of building to that position in boxing uh, in the world in general because uh, at that fight the fight, become, fight these fights become so big that even casuals want to see them I mean casuals wanted to see Mayweather Pacquiao casuals want to see Crawford and Spence you know so so it, it gets to that point where um Let's see. We'll see. We'll, we'll see how it plays out if it, if it comes to that point. I could really see that happening. Um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think of uh, thought of Joanna Davis's uh, performance last night. The, the stoppage. Yes, I was wrong. But again, I mean, if you look at my, what I predicted last week on Pro Box TV, I predicted Javante Davis. Like I said, I could not make up my mind in this fight. But Javante makes it look easy against Ryan Garcia. KO, seventh round, I believe. KO for Javante Davis. Let me know what you thought and think in the comments. I'm Paulie Malinaji. This is Paulie TV. I went. I went back and looked at the fight again. Uh, the first knockdown was actually underneath the left hook. Uh, the, the counter was underneath the left hook. Same kind of counter. Uh, tank crouches, smothers, and uh, comes up over the top after getting underneath a whipping shot. The first knockdown was actually a left hook, not a uh, whipping right hand from the side. The second shot, the second knockdown, which ended up being the knockout, was... The right hand coming from around the side. The first one was Ryan's favorite punch, the left hook, and uh, Tank was ready for it. Got underneath it and uh, countered over the top, which stopped a lot of momentum, mind you. Overall, though, same concept. It's uh, it's uh, Javante getting underneath those uh, wide shots. Uh, Ryan misjudging his distance, getting too close, and, and Javante making you pay, pouncing when you uh, overcommit on your distance.